Hello and welcome to Super Great Kids Stories. Wise tales from storytellers around the world which will make you laugh and sometimes cry. Recommended for ages 5 to 105. I'm Kim and I love stories. Hello Super Great Kids and how are you? I'm very cheerful for two reasons. First, Super Great David has written a little song about sharing stories, which is very catchy. See if you can learn it. And second, because lots of you have been helping us by voting for our podcast on the British Podcast Listeners Award. Thank you. If you'd like to vote for us, you can find the link on our website at supergreatkidsstories.com or on our Facebook page. As you may know, our current theme is trickster stories. The story this week is about a trickster from Africa and the Caribbean. He is half man and half spider. What's his name? Yes, of course, it's Anansi, the original Spider-Man who is up to his tricks again. This story is told by Kate Corkery. But before we begin, can you have a quick think about which is your favourite trickster? We've had all sorts of tricksters on Super Great Kids Stories. There's Djibouti the tortoise from Brazil, Raven from North America, Kojo the rabbit from Africa, Little Lamb from Mexico and Till Owlyglass from Germany. And of course, we can't forget Anansi from West Africa and the Caribbean. I wonder if you can decide which tricks do you like best and why, while we have a quick word with the grown-ups. Well, hello there, grown-ups and Super Great Kids Stories fans. As you probably know, we depend on your generosity and support to keep making this podcast. If you subscribe and join the Owlets Club, you'll get access to all sorts of lovely extras like subscriber-only episodes, early and ad-free episodes, as well as a newsletter from Story Owl, word puzzles, book recommendations, ooh, and film footage of our live shows. To support Super Great Kids Stories and join the Owlets Club, just click subscribe in Apple Podcasts or visit patreon.com forward slash Stories. Hello, Super Great Kids. I'm back. Well, did you decide your favourite trickster? Maybe you could send us a drawing. Send it to our Facebook page, facebook.com forward slash Super Great Kids Stories. Now, it's time to welcome the wonderful Kate Corkery with her version of Anansi and the Magic Yams. Over to you, Kate. Hello, Super Great Kids. I hope you're enjoying the holidays. I was thinking the other day, what I love about holidays is food as well as nice weather. The food we love in Ireland most is potatoes. Oh, I love them. Boiled potatoes, roast potatoes, fried potatoes, chips, crisps. Oh, they're wonderful. And in other countries, like where my friend Winston grew up, um, in Jamaica and in Caribbean countries, people often love to eat Yams. Oh, do you know what a yam is? A yam is a bit like a sweet potato. It's bigger, maybe it's more yellowy. Um, they grow on the ground. You can mash them, boil them, fry them, bake them. Oh, they're delicious. Mm, making me hungry. Making me think about this story. Boys and girls, I hope you like your vegetables. After this story, you might think very differently about vegetables. Are you ready? Well, let me begin. Once upon a time, long time ago, Anansi the spider, Anansi the trickster, was in his house. The sun was shining outside, the sky was blue, and he knew that in his field he had ripe, ripe 
yams ready to dig up. Now, if that were you or me or anyone else, we would get our shovel and go out and start to dig them up. But oh no, oh no, and Nancy the spider is a trickster, and Nancy the spider is lazy, and Nancy the spider, he doesn't like work. No, he'll get someone else to do that. So Nancy the spider goes to visit his best friend. His best friend is Brother Tiger. He knocks at the door. Hey, Brother Tiger. Yes, Nancy, why are you calling me? Brother Tiger, my yams, my delicious yams in the field are all ready to dig up. I have lots and lots of them, hundreds of them. Hey, Tiger. Yes, Nancy. If I give you a shovel, will you dig up my yams? And if you do that, you can have half of anything you dig up. What do you think? What a great deal, eh, Tiger? Well, uh, half, what do you mean, the top half, the bottom half? I mean half the amount, Tiger. If, if you dig up 20, I'll give you 10. If you dig up 40, I'll give you 20. If you give up... Oh, I can't do division, but you know what I mean. Hmm, said Tiger. All right, I like yams. I'll dig up some yams. Give me the shovel. <laughs> And Nancy was pleased. Tiger took the shovel. Tiger walked to the field. Tiger started to dig and dig and dig into the ground. And when he could see the yam down in the soil, he put down his tigery paw to pull it out, because that's what you do. You pull them out of the soil. But let me tell you something, boys and girls. When he went to pull out the yam, you know what happened? It went further into the ground. Mm, said Tiger. That's a funny yam. Let me try another one. So he went, and he started to dig and dig and dig again. He could see another yam deep in the soil. He put down his tigery paw to pull it out, but you know what happened? It went further into the ground. Isn't that strange? And Tiger tried again and again to dig up these yams. It was a hot day, he was getting tired, he was getting frustrated, he was sweating, and in the end he was really, really angry because for all the digging he was doing, he could not pull up even one yam. So you know what Tiger did? He put his big tigery face down the hole in the ground and he gave a big tigery roar. Well... He put the shovel over his shoulder and he walked out of the field very unhappy. And he was walking back to his house. In fact, he was walking towards Anansi's house to tell Anansi what he thought of those strange yams that he couldn't dig up. When he suddenly heard a sound. And this is the sound he heard. Tiki picky boom boom tiki picky boom boom poof. Did you hear that? Tiger thought he was imagining it. But he heard it again. Ticky picky boom boom, ticky picky boom boom boom. He looked around. And you cannot imagine what he saw. Because out from the ground, all over that field, the yams were climbing out all by themselves. Oh, yes, these little yams that looked like potatoes, they were there. Some of them had two legs. Some of them had one leg. Some of them had one arm or two arms or three arms. Some of them had one eye, two eyes, three eyes. Some of them had no eyes. They were strange little yams. But they were all making the same sound as they climbed out of the ground and made their way out of the field and started to chase after Tiger, who had roared at them. And they all said together, and you can help me say it, Ticky picky boom boom, ticky picky boom boom boof. Ticky picky boom boom, ticky picky boom boom boof. Well, well, Tiger began to get frightened. Tiger began to walk fast. The yams walked fast. Tiger began to run. The yams began to run. Tiger began to gallop. The yams began to gallop behind him. They were chasing him down the road. Tiger was puffing and panting and running and running. And he came to the first house in the village. He knocked on the door. And it was the home of Brother Dog. Brother Dog, Brother Dog, save me from the yams. The yams are chasing me. Save me from the yams. Brother Dog opened his door. Hey! Woof, woof, woof! 
Hello, Brother Tiger. What can I do for you? The yams, the yams are chasing me. Can I hide in your house, please, Brother Dog? Can I hide? Oh, well, 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 come in. Uh, uh, hide uh, uh, behind the sofa. Tiger squeezed himself behind the sofa in Brother Dog's house, and in no time, after Brother Dog had closed the door, he heard a knock outside. <coughs> Brother Dog went to the door to open it. <coughs> Outside were all these strange little yams standing, looking up. And they said in their little yummy voices, Have you seen Brother Tiger? Dog didn't know what to say. He'd never been asked a question by a yam before. And Dog didn't want to lie either. So he looked up and he looked down and he looked to the right and he looked to the left and he said, Oh, woof, woof, uh, Brother Tiger, no, woof, uh, I can't see him anywhere. Sorry. Woof, woof, woof. And he closed the door. Well, Brother Tiger was so relieved behind the sofa that he gave a big... Aah! But of course, tigers can't roar quietly. And the little yams, they heard him. They heard him roar from outside. And the little yams tried to batter down the door to run in after him. And Dog said, Tiger, you better escape out the back window. Tiger jumped out the back window and he ran through Dog's garden and he ran and he ran as fast as he could but the yams ran after him and the yams were saying all together ticky picky boom boom ticky picky boom boom boof and again go ticky picky boom boom ticky picky boom boom boof uh, Tiger didn't know where to run T Tiger found the next house and he knocked on the door and it was the home of Sister Duck Quack, 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 quack. Oh, Brother Tiger. Hello, Brother Tiger. Oh, Sister Duck, Sister Duck, can you help me? Help you, Brother Tiger? How can I help you? Oh, save me from the yams. The yams, the yams are chasing me. The yams are chasing you. Quack, quack. I've never heard of such a thing. Quack, quack, yams. Ch but they are. Please, can I hide in your house? Can I hide in your house? No, come in, Brother Tiger. You can, you can, quack, quack. Um, you can hide. No, I don't know. Have you got any idea where he can hide? Maybe you can hide under the table. Oh, Brother Tiger, he ran and squeezed himself under the table in Mrs. Duck's house. Mrs. Duck, she closed the door, but in no time, there was a knock on the door. Sister Duck opened the door, and outside were all these yams standing looking up at her, and all saying in their little yummy voices, Have you seen Brother Tiger? And Sister Duck, uh, she, 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 quack, 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 she looked up, quack, quack. She looked down, quack, quack. She looked to the right, quack, quack. She looked to the left, quack, quack. I can't, can't see him anywhere, quack, quack. Sorry. And Sister Duck closed the door and went back into her house. But Silly Tiger was so excited that the, the yams had been fooled by Sister Duck that he gave a big tiger -y. And of course... They found his hiding place, and Sister Duck said, Oh, Tiger, it's not safe for you to stay in my house anymore. You have to run, run, out you go, off you go. This time, Brother Tiger was really tired. Brother Tiger didn't know where to run, and he ran down the village as fast as he could. But as fast as he ran, he heard the voices behind him. He heard the little footsteps running behind him. He heard the little song they were all saying together. Ticky, picky, boom, boom, ticky, picky, boom, boom, boof. Ticky picky boom boom, ticky picky boom boom poof. Finally, finally, Brother Tiger, he got to the house of Brother Goat. He knocked at the door of Brother Goat. <laughs> Hello, Brother Tiger. It's nice to see you today. What are you doing calling at my house? Oh, oh, Brother Goat, Brother Goat, can you help me, Brother Goat? The yams are chasing me. The yams are chasing me. The yams are chasing you. I've never heard of such a thing. The yams are chasing me. Please, can I hide? Please, can I hide? Well, said Brother Goat, maybe it's better if you don't hide inside my house. Maybe it's better if you follow me. Across the river. Across the river? Yes, I know where there's a log stretching across the river like a bridge. And you can run over, Tiger. I know you don't like swimming. Follow me. So Tiger followed Brother Goat. Brother Goat led him to the water's edge and told him to run across a log that reached to the other side of the river. Tiger was very grateful to Brother Goat. So Tiger ran across the log and hid in the bushes at the other side of the river. But Goat did not follow him. 
Goat stayed on the log, and Goat put his head down, and Goat had strong, sharp horns. And when the yams came running down the road, tiki-piki-bum-bum, tiki-piki-bum-bum-boof, tiki-piki-bum-bum, tiki-piki-bum-bum-boof, the goat was waiting for them. And when the yams tried to cross the river and tried to run across the log, the goat was ready with his head bowed, and the goat flipped one, two, three, four, five, a hundred and five yams, one after the other, off the log and into the water. Splash! And all those yams got washed down the river. And they didn't chase Tiger any more. And later on, when Tiger and Goat went to look for the yams, and they weren't making any sounds any more, well, you know what? They look quite delicious. And Goat said, Tiger, we could have a yam party. We could invite all your animal friends and we can have yam stew and fried yams and boiled yams and roast yams and yam puddings and yam ice cream and all sorts of yam dishes. Yes, said Tiger, that's a great idea, Goat, my friend. Let's invite all the animals to the yam feast. There's only one Animal, I never want to see again. And who might that be? said Brother Goat. Well, of course, said Tiger. It's a Nancy the Spider, the trickster who tried to trick me. <clears throat> From that day on, Tiger and Nancy never got on. He never trusted him again. And since that day, there's one sound that really frightens Tiger. Can you guess what it is? Yes. Can you help me? Tiki picky boom boom tiki picky boom boom boof. Tiki picky boom boom tiki picky boom boom boof. Tiki picky boom boom tiki picky boom boom boof. Tiki picky boom boom tiki picky boom boom tiki picky boom boom boof. Thank you, Kate. What a funny story. Scary yams? Whatever next? At least Nancy didn't manage to snaffle all the food in this tale. Hurrah! That would be a good story for you to try and tell. You could add in whichever animals you particularly like for Tiger to visit. If you enjoy drawing, do you think you could send us a picture of all those tiny little yams with funny sticking out arms and legs singing Tiki Tiki Boom Boom and chasing Anansi? I wonder what you'd do if you were digging up vegetables and they suddenly started moving. Would you bash them on the head or keep them as pets or run away? Now, do you know what time it is? Yes, it's time to have a dip into my bag of happies and say a big thank you to some owlets who've been fluttering into our nest and joining our club. And hello to owlet Sophie in New Haven, Connecticut, who has just turned five. Sophie listens to super great kids stories with her big sister Maya and her little sister Ellie. Her favourite Super Great Kids stories are the ones that include a song or a jingle. She loves singing along while on the way to camp. And hoo -hoo 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 -hoo, to new outlets and veteran fans of Super Great Kids stories, Henry, who is almost six, and his brother Virgil, who is three. They are new to Patreon, but have been listening to us since 2020. Oh, well done. And hoo -hoo 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 -hoo, and hello to Una, who is six, and Aoife, who is four, from Cape Town. They like to listen to our stories with their grandma, Liz. I hope you're enjoying all the bonus and scary stories. And hoo -hoo 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 -hoo, to Miles, who is seven. Miles was very brave recently. He listened to the story Wild Jack and the Two-Headed Giant to help him get through a very tricky time. Well done, Miles. And 
<laughs> to Alexander, who is seven and lives in Albuquerque in New Mexico in the US. He likes to listen to stories with his family during long drives. His favourite story is the one from Sicily, Mama Draga. And hello to Rowan, who is just turning six. What a lovely age, Rowan. Her favourite story is Jack and the Two-Headed Giant. She's just moved into a new home in Nevada City in California. Hope you settle quickly into your new nest. Oh, I mean home. And welcome to the Owlet Club too. And hello to super great kids fan Rory in Pujon in southern Chile, who recently celebrated a special birthday. And hello to super fans and siblings Kai, who is 11, and Mia, who is 7, who live near Granada in Spain and who are super great at drawing. And thanks very much for Kofi donations to Lucy, who is just turning 6, and brother Miles. And also to Marijo, who sent a lovely message about the stories helping to smooth the way for a first very long car journey with young children. Thank you, Marijo. Lovely to hear that. And finally, a big thanks to Ellis, Rory and Asta in Geneva in Switzerland for being one of the first Super Great Kids fans to vote for us on the British Podcast Awards. And thanks to those of you who've been sending in pictures. Here are my picks of pictures for this week. Thanks to Rocio, who is six from Washington, D.C., who sent us a beautiful drawing of the Jamaican story River Mama, coloured in blue, gold and sea green. River Mama is sitting on a silver rock and singing her song. Thank you, Rocio. It's really beautiful. And thanks to model maker Luca, who is seven, from Woburn, Massachusetts, in the US. Luca has made a genius Baba Yaga hut, complete with scary-looking claws, and a Baba Yaga model, complete with headscarf and armed with vegetables to pop into her cauldron. Thank you, Luca. And Esme, who is seven and a half, from Fanganui in New Zealand, was inspired by Lazy Jack and the Two-Headed Giant to draw her own picture of Mummy Two-Head, the giant who's just had a baby Two-Head. Brilliant. Thanks very much for sharing it with us, Esme. I love the clothes Mummy Two-Head is wearing and the Two-Headed Baby with one tooth. Very imaginative. Thank you. A super great drawing. And finally, Mveli, who is six from Durban in South Africa, has drawn the story Lion, Vulture and Hyena, which was told by Kate Corkery. I love the way you've drawn the sun blazing down, the vulture high in the sky, the lion with its handsome mane and scruffy hyena standing by the cave where they all live together happily until things started to go wrong. A great picture for a very good story. Thanks, Mveli. That's it for this week. If you'd like to see some of these super great drawings, they're on our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash super great kids stories. Do send in your pictures for us to share on Facebook with other story lovers. If you'd like to send a picture, either attach it to our Facebook Messenger or scroll to the bottom of our website at supergreatkidsstories.com And if you live in South London and would like to hear me telling a few stories, I'm going to be telling some at our local small village show in Isha in Surrey on August Bank Holiday Saturday. That's August the 26th. It's just me telling the stories. There's no tickets. It's free of charge. So do come along if you live nearby and say hello. I'd love to meet you. Meanwhile... Keep telling your stories and singing your songs. See if you can find an easy story to tell and surprise someone in your family or a friend by sharing your version. See you soon. This podcast was recorded at Wardour Studios in London.